Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey DeWire. We're presented by the Wash House. Thank you to the Wash House for allowing us to cover this team on a day-to-day basis and making it all possible, but for Vanderbilt basketball, the mass exodus has begun. It began on Thursday as Jerry Stackhouse was mutually parted ways with. Lee Dort entered the portal, I think, Friday, and since then, Jason Veritores and Colin Smith went in expressing perhaps some desire to maybe return if everything winds up right. Paul Lewis went in yesterday, uh, and today, obviously, Tyron Lawrence goes on the portal, and really not super unexpected, but it is a blow for Vanderbilt. I think turnover inherently is a good thing for this roster, but Tyron Lawrence, a guy who had a really good career here, and not a great career, but hit a huge shot against Tennessee that he mentioned, and Stack mentioned him as the ultimate culture guy. I think uh, Stack was really hard on him for a lot of their tenure, but I think Tyron maybe at some point figured out that uh, he had ability really beyond what I think a lot of people thought he had. And obviously you saw that last off season, he's went in the portal, got himself paid. Uh, and you like to see that for a guy like him. And I'm assuming it'll happen again this off season. Some of the money that's been thrown around in the transfer portal already is unreal. And I would expect Tyron Lawrence to be able to get some dividends from that. Last year had some teams that are in the tournament now contacting him. He chose to come back to Vanderbilt. I don't know that that's a move that worked out super well for him, but he's got another chance in his final year of eligibility to do some things that maybe he hadn't done in his Vanderbilt career, make the tournament, um, win some more awards than he'd won previously. This year he averaged 13.8 a game, wasn't super efficient, shot under 40% from the field, 27% from three. I think he was just a high volume guy on a team that needed some more pieces to surround him. It felt like even when he was able to kind of make a play, make a read, guys wouldn't make the shots. So Tyron Lawrence just wasn't surrounded by what he needed to be surrounded by this year. Um, again, had a really nice career at Vanderbilt, hit that big shot against Tennessee. He was a huge catalyst for their run late in the season a few years ago, but obviously comes up without a tournament berth, and that's basically every Vanderbilt basketball player in the modern era. Tyron, I think, again, a guy who did a lot for this program, did a lot of really good things for them, uh, and I don't know where they would have been without him this year if he had decided to go elsewhere in the portal. Their replacement options, woo, not anywhere near the level of Tyron Lawrence. He had a lot more pressure on him this year than I think we thought he would have on him. I thought they'd have a little bit more shot making on the perimeter. Tyron and Ezra really had to do everything offensively though, and I think that's really what it boiled down to. Lawrence was a guy who uh, was built to be a high volume guy. It's gonna be interesting to see how he fits in in other schemes, but it was built to be a high volume guy with shooters around him and those shooters didn't make shots. And that's simple as it was, but Lawrence also wasn't blameless throughout the year. I think there were uh, some times where his defense was a big issue for this team. And I wouldn't say all the time his effort was an issue, but once in a while you'd look and say the body language is an issue or something along those lines. But I think Vanderbilt fans ultimately will probably remember a lot of good out of this career. Obviously, they went to Kentucky and won last year, largely on the back of Tyron Lawrence. Obviously, Jordan Wright played a big part in that game as well. The SEC tournament last year uh, with LSU and Kentucky again, Tyron Lawrence was a huge catalyst in those games. If he goes in the SEC, it's going to be a really interesting dynamic to see him back. But again, a guy who passed up a lot last offseason to return to Vanderbilt and it didn't work out for him. He's a really good player, and we'll see if they end up, they end up finding way for him to be in the right situation. Um, It just didn't work out this season for a multitude of reasons. I think a lot of those reasons were bigger than Tyron Lawrence himself, but his efficiency, I think, was just not where it needed to be. If Vanderbilt was gonna make a run this year, it had to get more from Tyron Lawrence than it did. And I think Tyron knows that. I think a lot of people around that program know that, but it was fitting for him to be able to make a a clutch play in his last game at Memorial, because it felt like Lawrence was always the guy him and Mignon, who when they when you put the ball in their hands late in the game, didn't really feel like you were going to lose very often. And a lot of the time, they didn't get to the spot where they were able to get the ball in their hands late because of the blowout losses they had. And there was a lot of tough nights for this team, but when Mignon and Lawrence had the ball late in the clock, you saw what happened against Florida, you saw what happened against A&M. So uh, Lawrence, I think, again, a guy who played a lot of really good basketball and the lights were bright. And it'd be interesting to see if he could may replicate that at another school. I want to talk about Paul Lewis. He's also gone to the portal. I don't know that Lewis is a loss I'm devastated about. They were kind of hoping that he would take a step forward this year, but they took a lot of bad shots. Uh, his confidence at some point, I think, was shot as well. And 
was kind of playing not to make a mistake at some points. At some points was playing a little too loose and uh, being a little free with the ball when he didn't need to be. But I think he's a guy who could be a nice mid-major player. I don't know that he'll get another opportunity at the Power 5 level now. He'll probably have to go down if he wants to come back up. We'll have to play well enough down there to come back up. But I also think Paul Lewis, to an extent, this isn't fully the staff's fault, but the roster was in a in a shape to where Lewis kind of had to play out of position at times, play at the two. And I think Lewis is really a straight up one uh, when it all comes down to it. And I think they were forcing him to kind of be something he wasn't. And then when he did play more one later in the year, wasn't fully equipped to do it. So Vanderbilt loses pretty much his entire backcourt uh, in the last couple of days. Isaiah West is the one who's still there, but really interesting couple of weeks coming for Vanderbilt basketball attrition, not a terrible thing. And I think we're going to see a lot more of it, more of a mass exodus, but, uh, just wanted to talk about those guys and their careers at Vanderbilt and maybe what could have been as well. But uh, I don't expect them to get either of them back. Maybe they get Rivera Torres and Smith back, but gonna have to start over after a season like that. And I think that's what Vanderbilt's experiencing now. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. And uh, Billy and I will have your baseball coverage tonight in a few hours. Thank you for watching again. God bless. Peace.